So I wanted to go ahead and get this information out to you guys. I think it's important. I have the LBZ Duramax on the hoist. And today we're gonna go ahead and talk about transfer cases, pump rub kits, stuff like that, where they commonly leak. Um, especially if you have a truck, I would recommend that you get underneath that truck and just check it out. If you haven't looked at it in a while, let me show you where they commonly leak at and why it does that. So I'm gonna do a video at Kodiak Truck at the business there and show you guys what it looks like when it's all torn apart. But the wider parts on the back end of this case right here is where the pump actually rides. That's where it sits. And eventually over time and many miles of it rocking left and right, it's going to eventually eat a hole into that case and then it's gonna be leaking. You'll have no idea until it's too late. And then that transfer case is probably gonna end up exploding. It's gonna break all in little pieces. And then at that point, you're gonna be in bigger trouble. You're gonna to have to buy a brand new transfer case. That's not fun. So essentially, if you buy a transfer case pump rub kit, it basically comes with a plate, uh, some silicone, the gasket, of course. So a transfer case pump rub kit would be a great option for some of you guys. If you decide that you wanna do this by yourself in your driveway or in your garage, the overall gist on this plate is it causes a nice little footprint into that case where you can reinstall that pump and it shouldn't have any more issues. It's a great option, but what goes wrong, just like anything, any installer, if you decide to install this thing, you do it incorrectly, eventually that transfer case is going to fail on you anyway. So stay tuned, watch till the very end, because I'm gonna have Mark, which is the owner of Kodiak Truck, He's gonna explain to you guys why and what to look out for. We're also gonna be talking about some of the common failures of transfer cases that you guys probably don't know about, but hopefully we can get Mark to answer some of those questions that you and I always have, so I'm gonna be asking him those direct questions. After doing videos for many years there at the shop, I'm starting to learn certain things that I shouldn't cut corners on, and that's definitely one. If I decide to do a pump rub kit on my transfer case, it's probably best to go ahead and just spend the extra money and buy a remanufactured unit. And we're also gonna be talking about some of those transfer cases that he builds and why they're so much better than the factory ones. So I'm pretty sure after this video, you're probably gonna go to your driveway and see if your transfer case is leaking. But let's be honest here, it's such an overlooked thing when it comes to maintenance. But with all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into the video. Now I'm here at Kodiak Truck, Ryan's Diesel Service, again in North Prairie, Wisconsin. I love doing YouTube videos out here, but in today's video, we're gonna talk about the infamous pump rub on the uh, 263 XD Duramax transfer cases. XHD. XHD, I'm sorry about that. It's okay. Uh, <laughs> and then we do have the professor here, Mark. He is the owner of Kodiak Truck himself. And we're gonna talk a little bit about case savers, guys. Is it a good idea? What are the pros and cons? If there is any cons or pros, I don't really know. I know some guys actually JB weld these things when they leak, they're very problematic, which most of you guys already know that. But would it be a good idea to do a case saver versus just getting it remanufactured? So a case saver plate is just gonna buy you time. Inevitably, the case is still gonna fail, not necessarily from pump rub, but because of wearing out the snap ring groove in the rear of the case, which obviously will allow it then to take the mode fork out first in the rear of the case, which we'll talk about in a second and explain that. Um, the case saver plates and the, and the pump halves, they do work. They do work for, the, for that particular thing, but there's other areas of failure. So I'd rather address the areas of failure all with one shot, and that's why we put the aluminum back housings on. Our, our rear housings are heavy duty. They're heavy material, heavy cast aluminum. Um, the areas in the pump rub area where they would normally be on our aftermarket housings are th a lot thicker than the factory ones. Um, and quite honestly, I give a lifetime warranty on pump rub. And we've just gone to lifetime warranty on our, our XHD and HD series cases. So when you're talking about pump rub, you're talking about the actual pump inside of the case that's hitting against the case over time and eventually puts a pinhole. Um, which through the rear of the case. Through the rear of the case, yeah. Yep. And it's very common. So guys, I also want you guys to let me know in the comments, have you done a case saver on your truck? How long has it lasted? Love to read it, I'm very curious. All right, if you guys look at a factory housing, um, I don't know, maybe that light killed you, maybe not. No, it's good. Okay, you can see here's the pump rub area where they're notorious where they rub through. This is on a factory mag rear. If you bring the camera over to here, you'll see what we got on ours, and it's way heavier duty, mm -hmm. way more area. Again, knowing this is mag, yes, you're gonna have wear issues inside this case um, from the pump rat rattling in there. You're gonna eventually knock holes through as it, as it vibrates in there. Does the case saver plate prevent that in the pump half? Absolutely it does. But what it does, nothing prevents is that snap ring groove from wearing out that takes out that fork. So what we do is we address everything. We get rid of the soft mag housing, we go to the heavy aluminum housing, and there we have it. Aluminum housing, aluminum pump, and the pump will not cut through here. This is the same setup they had in the 241 case that never pump rubbed. 
So every every case we have that's got the mag rear on it, the 246s, 261s, 263s, they all get aluminum housings put on them. The inevitable may actually have, actually happen where it's going to take out this fork when guys do that. Um, yeah, if if you go in and say you don't pay attention or you don't understand how the tight the tolerances need to be for these snap ring grooves, and you put a case saver plate in it or a pump plate or whatever you put in the thing and you put it back together this case can still fail and in fact it's going to over a period of time because that pressure from the slip yoke on the on the main shaft is going to put pressure forward it'll wear out that snap ring groove and as soon as that happens the main shaft everything will come forward and it'll burn the center right out of the fork the slider clutch which is steel will put pressure on there it'll heat up no matter if it's got oil or not it'll burn that up we're gonna talk about uh some fail common failures with transfer cases some of the things that we've been developing here stuff we're changing um we're always looking to keep our game up and up our game and and stay ahead of everybody else with a quality unit for a fair price i have seen recently a lot of units coming back as cores um that somebody else has attempted to rebuild and or put some parts at and tune up and it seems that there is a, a lot of things that are missed when guys are doing this. Where we got our bearing bore down in here, we spread our snap ring to set our bearing. Drop the bearing in, snap ring set. Problem is this, you move this, this thing's got 40, 50 thousandths of movement. That is way too much movement. Now you can put, we, we actually machine our own shims that we can put some shim in there but we don't exceed 20 thousandths. If that exceeds 20 thousandths, we throw the housing away and we put a brand new front housing in it. Here's why. When that snap ring groove and that bore wears, by putting the shim in, you're shoving this bearing back. When that happens, you're also shoving the input gear in the planetary rearward with the range hub. The range hub in high range going down the highway rides into the back of that input gear. When that happens, you end up putting pressure on the bottom of this fork where the plastic pads are. I've had numerous guys call on the phone and go, yeah, I went to change my oil and I pulled the plug and some plastic fork pads came out. I've read on some of these Facebook pages and <laughs> some of them are pretty bad information and bad comments. They're like, yeah, you just need to put a new fork in the, the fork's junk. Well, there's a reason why the fork failed and why the pad failed. It failed because this bearing's walking backwards, the range hub's coming back with it, putting pressure on this and burning it up. When these bearing bores get so bad, you end up with a fork that looks like this. It'll burn the entire center out of it. This is a brand new fork. This is what you end up with if you don't address that. So we will end up going then and putting a brand new uh, aluminum front housing in, which we now have aftermarket aluminum fronts that are way heavier duty than the factory mag houses and we'll end up putting one of these in um, we're currently working on a project and i think it's going to come to light here pretty soon where we're going to be offering a brand new unit all aluminum aluminum rear aluminum front and i know there's guys that are going to say well the factory mag case takes a thousand horsepower it does take a thousand horsepower you can take a stock case and put a thousand to it it'll it'll take it all day long as long as the bearing bores are good the bearings are good and the parts are good inside of it um this is going to be one of them transfer cases that you should virtually never be able to wear out because it's made of better material um in some of the prior videos you guys seen too where uh, we talk about our aluminum rears a lot of that stuff is missed too where guys will say well i'll put a case saver plate in so it doesn't pump rub you're right the case saver plate won't allow it to pump rub but what you miss is the snap ring groove in the rear of the case wears out that's why we have everybody update with the nickel yoke when that back bearing bore wears out and it allows a main shaft to come forward you have your mode fork inside the case that sits down in here it's pinned in with the shift cam and that comes forward and puts pressure on and it'll end up burning the center right out of here we've had them where they'll burn the entire center out you might get lucky, go put it in four-wheel drive, it slides the slider clutch back, engages it, so it drives the front output, you go to put it back to two-wheel drive to come back down, and it breaks center out, and you're stuck in four-wheel drive and you can't get it out. You'll also notice if you ever take your case apart, let's say you're going to throw a pump rub kit in it or something because you think it's low mileage or even a rear case half, if you see anything like this where it's worn on the edge, that's the telltale sign 
that your drive sprocket hub that's got the sprocket on and main shaft is severely wore out. And what's happening is when it's in four wheel drive, it's cocking and the chain is hitting that and cutting that up. Again, that's the reason why we machine our main shafts and add bearings in. I've done this a long time. We, we try to put the best possible unit out there for the most affordable price. And again, we always look to try to up our game and I feel that we have the best unit out there on the market period, hands down. Um, I'm very particular with these case halves, even these used core, the cores that come back with the used housings. This stuff just gets thrown in the scrap barrel. Um, these housings are, are fantastic. And um, that's basically what this unit is right here. This is one of our all aluminum units. This is one of our units with the brand new aluminum front and aluminum rear. Um, substantially heavier. This case probably weighs 10 pounds more than the, the factory mag unit. But it's a heavy duty piece. It's got our uh, rollerized main shaft in it and all the good parts. So that main shaft that we machine in our cases where we add three bearings into that and that's kind of one of our our deals that we do we, and we do it on every unit it's not an optional upgrade we do it on uh, gas six liter stuff even uh, basically it's a friction reducer and you lose the friction in the case and and you lose wear and uh, you lose friction you drop heat and the, the key is to keep these things alive I know you're probably not going to claim this but it may be safe to say that I may get a little bit better miles per gallon because of the less friction I've ran every every diesel that I own with the exception of the power stroke uh, he actually remanufactured here and I'm telling you guys you can tell a difference even when the vehicle's coasting So I'd imagine that it may actually help just maybe a little bit on miles per gallon. I'd imagine I Don't want to uh, I don't want to claim fuel economy because the first guy that doesn't get it I'm gonna have to send him a Kleenex box for tears. You know how that goes But the beard has put plenty of my stuff in his truck and he's kind of our test animal and when I did the transfer case for his LBZ dually um, the one that's got the nine blade that you did the video on, mm -hmm. he claims he picked up almost three miles a gallon, which is pretty substantial. Um, again, where we machine those parts and add those bearings, that benefits you in two-wheel drive. You put more miles on in two-wheel drive than you do four-wheel drive, even if you're a farmer or a rancher. So again, that's just uh, an upgrade we do. It's done on all of them, all the all the HD and XHD series cases. And that would be about the same amount of money as if somebody was to buy a remanufactured unit from a different company. Or is your yours a price a little bit higher because of that engineering? I, our price currently on these is fifteen eighty five. I think it's a very a, competitively a price. Yeah, you know, considering what we put in them and the, and the quality of the unit. Um, are there cheaper units? Sure. Good parts aren't cheap, and cheap parts aren't good. So we use good parts. So it cost, might cost a little bit more than your average eBay transfer case or something of that nature. Right. So I see them on there cheaper, but you're getting what you pay for this day and age. So I think that's a pretty good take, and I appreciate your knowledge on that one because I think everyone needs to hear this. Yeah, and, and I think the biggest thing is, and I know some people are real die wool, uh, dyed in the wool Facebook people, and some aren't, and some are more YouTube people or whatever, but I see a lot on Facebook where guys are given bad advice and they say, well, just put a new fork in it or you need new pads on the fork, it'll be fine. There's a reason why it broke. You have to look further than that. So if you're doing your own case, look further than that. When you see a part that failed, there's a reason why it failed. Figure out why it failed and, and correct that problem. Otherwise, you're gonna be right back in it again. I honestly feel bad for some of these guys when I do see these cores come back and I open them up and I look at it and they shotgunned a bunch of parts at it and it still failed or they missed a snap ring and didn't get it in place now they're spending more money than if they would have just bought a remand from us right out of the gate we actually have a rebuild kit or a rebuild install video if i'm not mistaken from years back on this channel of you doing it i believe so but very cool stuff man i appreciate all of your insight absolutely so there you guys have it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Definitely check them out if you guys have a transfer case that you're interested in getting rebuilt. Duramax, Power Stroke, and Cummins. All of them. All of them. All above A, a through Z, pretty even, much. Even the half-ton gassers. We do a ton of that stuff. That's yeah. awesome. Yep. Also, uh, I think my coupon code is still good on his website. It's going to be Truckmaster. Definitely apply that if you guys want to pick that up. But that is it for this video. We'll see you on the next one. Stay tuned. I've prepped some of the stuff ahead of time, planetary input gears in, front all put shaft assembly. Um, I wanted to get good video of this so you guys could see the difference between our cases and everybody else. In your transfer case, this piece here has got your, 
your drive gear on it. They call it a drive sprocket carrier hub. It's got all your clutch mechanism, everything else on it. From the factory, this is our setup. We're metal on metal. Not a great design, but it that's what they put in them. You can see the efficiency of this thing by me spinning it. What we do is we send these shafts out. We have them CNC machined. They're plus or minus a half a thou. We actually take our hub, bore it, and add three extra bearings in this case that they never had in it. Now when we put this whole assembly together, we drop it on. We've got something that's dropped just an immense amount of friction out of it. Um, if you own a truck that's a 7.5 and, and newer with a magnet case in it, that magnet case now has bearings back in it. And they actually use these bearings back in the 90s in the 241 cases and everything else. We're going to go ahead and get this assembly together uh, with the uh, shift on the fly friction piece that's also updated and everything else. Uh, this is just such a better way to go than just slamming parts together and putting the same thing together that, that fails. You know, get our clutch mechanism all in here and everything else for our shift on the fly. We also updated the center friction piece. From the factory, that piece is a high metallic. We replace it with a piece that's not high metallic. Never was a great fan of pieces that are metal that are wearing. So there's our shaft assembly ready to go in, and we're just going to keep rolling here and put pieces together on this thing. We're going to drop our range hub in and our range fork. Got that in. Now we're going to put our old shaft assembly in with our mode fork, which is another thing you want to look closely at. Make sure the pads on it are good, nothing's wore. Got that assembly in, now we're going to drop our chain and sprocket. As you can see, it doesn't take a whole lot of time to put these together. If you have your pieces prepped ahead of time and ready to roll, drop our return spring in, our pickup tube for our oil pump. Drop our magnet back in. We always lube our oil pump a little bit ahead of time and, and actually all the bearings and forks and everything in here get a little bit of oil on everything. Just for assembly, we don't know how long they're gonna sit on the bench and or on the shelf for. Put our tone wheel in. Gotta look at that closely too. A lot of times if the back bearing goes out, we're gonna have an issue with that tone wheel. We're gonna have marks in it, we're gonna have dings, dents, and that will definitely throw you a speed sensor code. Uh, generally speaking, you guys are going to see a PO735. And anytime you see that code, it's not a transmission code. It's basically always related to um, uh, transfer case failure. So this is basically what we got so far. We'll get the back case half on it, the dowels and everything else. The other thing that's highly critical now is you can see this case is together before we drop the rear housing on. That's the only thing left. We always update these cases. It's always a wise thing to do with a nickel-coated spicer yoke. The updated yoke and comes with a spicer factory forged joint. Um, as you've seen when we took this apart, the snap ring groove failure is an issue. The only thing that causes that failure is this yoke binding on that shaft guaranteed. There's nothing else doing it. You have pressure on this shaft going forward. Where's the back of the magnesium housing with the snap ring groove closed? And that's a definite problem. So... We're gonna go ahead, drop the rear case on this thing at this point in time, and uh, get this thing together. All right, we jumped ahead here. We got our dowels in. I've seen a lot of times cores come back where guys got these dowels missing. It's highly crucial they're in there. They're alignment dowels. They keep everything perfectly in line. Don't rely on the bolts to do that. Um, at any rate, we put a light bead of silicone around here. We use the Loctite brand Ultra. We love that stuff. Never ever in 35 years have I had a leakage problem with any of that stuff. We're gonna go ahead, put the rear case half on, uh, bolt her up, and finish her up. This, uh, these things fit very, very snug, which is a good thing. Um, they can be a real joy to get together sometimes, but you just gotta be patient and work with it. You gotta spread your snap ring, come in, lift it up, and look at that, went together perfectly. Uh, gotta love that. Get all our bolts in our proper locations, our mounting tabs and everything and uh, we'll get everything bolted up here and, and ready to roll back to Michigan. All right, so basically all we gotta do is put our speed sensor in here yet, which does have an O-ring in. Make sure your O-ring is good. Uh, get your speed sensor back in. Also on our drain plugs, which I'll show you here in a second, what we end up using is we use a liquid Teflon on them so we don't have any drips coming off our drain plugs. Put a little liquid Teflon on them, we thread those in, and we're good to go. Um, on our cases, 
I do not go crazy cranking these things in. This is a brand new rear housing. There's no need for it. You snug them down nice and you're good to go. Um, also on the back of this case, you'll see that we have ours labeled clearly 530 full synthetic engine oil. Been a lot of talk on the internet. I've seen about various different fluids, what to run. Here's the problem that we have with straight up ATF. ATF foams like crazy in a transfer case once you're in four wheel drive. That chain in there will beat that fluid up and aerate the fluid. Now your oil pump can, can't suck pure oil anymore. The next upgrade from that would be synthetic ATF, which won't foam. Problem with ATF is zero weight oil no matter what you do. He said, we, we prefer the 530 in it for this reason. Some guys say they got a special oil for this case and that's fine and that's good and great. The oil that they're probably using has a modifier in a 530 type oil to address the piece they call the friction right here. This is an upgraded friction. This is not a high metallic piece. The earlier friction was a high metallic. Again, we don't run those. If you were gonna have a factory case and you had that high metallic friction, you would have to have almost something like a posi additive type fluid in with your oil to address that friction modifier in there. We simply get rid of that piece, go to the updated piece in every case. I don't care if I pull one out and it looks brand new. If it's a high metallic, it's going in the garbage, we're putting the updated piece in. With that said, 530 has worked wonders in these cases. I've done this in every chain drive non-auto track case for the last 20 years that we've been building these cases. Um, going back all the way into the 241s, 243s in the mid 90s, even the 208 cases, all the way back into square body trucks. Um, the oil just works wonders. We're gonna go ahead, uh, off video, finish up putting the seals in and everything else, get this thing boxed up and get her back out UPS today.